Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. Welcome back. It is the Earthmaster once again out here on this Tuesday night uh, covering the activity around the globe here for earthquake activity. About 10, 11 p.m. California time. we got a 2.1 out here into the uh, uh, California area. Also, it looks like some movement kicking up in Alaska once again. Seeing a five-pointer coming in pretty recent there within the last few minutes. Going to start off with space weather real quick. We do have a, a potential G2 class storm heading our way. Thanks to, uh, well, a couple CME type events from 3500 that uh, produced a 3.5 or a M3.5 flare and also an M9.8 flare earlier today. And both of those were earth directed, definitely had an earth directed component to them. So that will be geo effective. Looks like potentially starting on the 30th into the uh, December 1st time period. We'll have to nail out these details to the complete accuracy once we get uh, a better look at them probably tomorrow. But either way, that uh, looks like we're going to see some roars kicking up here in the G2, uh, at least a G2 class storm category. And again, that's going to be from 3500, which is the culprit down here. Uh, it is still fairly dynamic. It does have quite a bit of different dark colors in here, indicating some complexity. Uh, looking over here across this area, it looks like we're starting to grow a little bit of complexity, but that sunspot area is uh, just about way over there on the western limb, so to be out of sight, out of mind here soon. Coming up around the bend here for us in the coming days, we do have a couple newer sunspots that uh, kind of hard to tell if they're going to be active or not, but they're at least there. Uh, but for now, the main threat is going to be from 3500 that is still currently facing us. And that does harbor some potential uh, for some X-flare uh, probabilities there at about a 10% chance or so. Uh, along with 40% chance for an M-flare, 99% certainty for a C-flare. Now, now there is that X, almost X-flare uh, that kicked off earlier uh, this morning. And uh, looks like maybe there was another C-flare following that uh, large M-flare. So we do have uh, some CMEs headed this way. <coughs> turn off my phone here uh, just reminding me that bedtime is right around the corner that sounds good to me uh, so yeah we'll continue to watch this see how it plays out uh, in the coming days far as space weather goes hopefully we get some uh, good auroras up there at the uh, higher latitudes we also do have a, a fairly large coronal hole 76 is a number that's a beautiful um coronal hole that's out here and uh we'll have to see if this holds up once it uh, gets into the earth directed view as uh, far as like squarely lined up right now it's kind of shooting off there to the eastern limb of the sun but uh, if it stays like that that could also enhance conditions here over the next few days uh, once we're in a position as far as the auroras go so looking pretty active right now of course 3500 is uh a little on the crazy side it looks uh looks pretty dynamic down here so we'll continue to watch that area for some uh maybe some stronger flaring good thing that yeah, it's definitely kicking up i mean it's solar maximum right we should be seeing events like this very common should be very common during this time of uh, uh elevated activity all right let's see what else we got here uh, earthquake activity. Let me jump into the earthquake map here real quick and see what's going on. Uh, one little earthquake this morning off the coast of Northern Cal. This is uh, just prior to the Cascadia subduction zone, a little 1.9. Uh, now we are seeing a little bit of elevated movement here across the Alaska area once again. This is that same region that's seen a five-pointer here yesterday, so things are not done yet. Still looks like uh, it wants to move in this area with a 4.5 here within the last hour, so keep an eye on that region. Uh, still quite active down here across the area of the southwestern edge of the Pacific Plate. The latest one looks like a 4.5 here uh, in the New Guinea area, about 19 kilometers deep or so. Uh, some deeper movement quakes from this morning there in the Tonga Trench. Uh, looks like the last one was 4.5 earlier this afternoon, though. That's uh, 579 kilometers deep. Uh, New Zealand, see if anything major is going on down there. Looks like we're getting some deeper activity into portions of the Kermadec Trench. Let me run over here real quick and see what we got for 
the GeoNet servers stand by here for just a second. All right. Uh, well, nothing really showing up here on the map. It looks like 14 hours ago. Uh, the last one was a 3.0. So if there was anything major, we would definitely see it out there. As far as the earthquake drums go across the area, there's some of those smaller quakes. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of localized earthquake activity here across New Zealand for now. Most of it appears to be way up uh, into the Kermadec Trench regions. All right, the Big Island of Hawaii. Well, not a whole lot of earthquake activity, but we are still looking at uh, some elevated tilt going on here. Elevated inflation across the Kilauea Volcano. I'll show you exactly what I mean here uh, in terms of uh, elevated tilt activity. This is the last two days here. Um, doesn't look like much, right? But when you compare it to the past 30 days, we're definitely way up here on the inflation chart. Uh, kind of continuing to peak out there. Uh, so we will watch that. Um, right now, I mean, obviously, there's uh, continued magma uh, building up underneath this area. I, I, I'm starting to lean towards the potential that it may be blocked down there as far as uh, finding any... Uh, available route to the surface, route to the surface. Uh, most of the time here, at least you know, over the past couple eruptions, we've seen that confined there to the lava lake area of the Kilauea volcano. So I, I don't think that's going to play out this time. I'm leaning more towards some uh, activity further south there, but it's continuing. So we'll just watch it and uh, kind of see what it wants to do, right? It's going to do what it wants to do regardless. Uh, let's see what else we got here across the area. Uh, Oban area looks like a 4.8. It's kind of an odd earthquake away from the plate boundary. Don't really see too much earthquake activity out here. In fact, looking at the general seismic map here, uh, that's just an odd one here. Nothing really above the uh, 4.5 level here historically, at least since about 1900 or so. So it's a little odd. Do to try to... Notice those art, uh, those little odd quakes here. I really haven't seen too much in the way of elevated movement out there in this region, but uh, I'll continue to watch it, I guess. It looks like, uh, well, those may be different magnitudes from the different agencies, but either way, keep an eye on this area with some of that uh, odd movement going on there away from the plate boundary. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Uh, let's give a quick glance here at the... Iceland activity. See if there's anything stirring up out here. Make sure we got the most recent map. Wow, only 38 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours. That is uh, it's very minimal. Uh, not all. I mean, we got some earthquake activity down here across the Grindavik area of Iceland, but uh, overall, it looks like things are kind of mellowing out. They did not put out an update today uh, from the uh, Icelandic Met Office. This was from yesterday. We'll have to see if they put one out tomorrow. For now, I'm guessing things are just uh, relatively uh, stationary as they have been over the past couple days. We did see a little bit of elevated earthquake activity around uh, the region, but uh, nothing, nothing major that would tell me that the eruption is imminent within the hour or so. It's just, you know, we'll continue to watch that. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. Did we check California out? This has been an area uh, down here. A little bit of movement kicking up here. Outside of the Borrego Springs area. Now, this is on the San Jacinto Fault Zone, but it is in close proximity to the San Andreas Fault. We've been noticing a handful of earthquakes around this area in the last 24 hours. So, things appear to still be somewhat elevated in this region. Nothing major going on on the San Andreas Fault for now, but... Keep an eye on it. Further up north, one earthquake here around the Bay Area, 2.1. Uh, the rest of Northern California, a little spotty out there. Texas getting in on all the action here lately uh, with quite a few of the oil fields getting hit in a big way out there across this region. Um, but for the most part, the earthquake magnitudes there have been on the low side, but uh, keep your eyes open here because we can get some larger quakes out here shaking things up out there in the uh, western Texas area. Let's check out the um, trimmer. Trimmer, trimmer, trimmer. Where are you? Right here. 
Well, 119 epicenters of Trimmer, a little bit down in uh, Oregon and up around the Vancouver Island ranges here. Uh, for, like I said, 119, not a big deal. We really haven't seen any major elevated trimmer since about October of last year. So this is a pretty lengthy time period here of just minimal trimmer activity. All right, uh, what else we got? Anything uh, else going on here across the globe? Deeper quakes down into the uh, Kermadec Trench. South America region seen a handful of earthquakes down there, but this is very typical for that major subduction zone. Uh, no further new activity over here across this region of the Barbados area. They did see a 5.1 uh, earlier this morning. Uh, this region can no doubt see some large damaging earthquakes. It is a, a, a major subduction zone out here, and those earthquakes can get quite big. Uh, but for now... Just that uh, little five-pointer kicking up earlier this morning. All right, uh, severe weather. We do have severe weather potential here. It looks like uh, coming in to, well, still out there in day three. This is going to be, what, Thursday? Thursday into Friday. We'll have to check this first thing tomorrow. Uh, there is a possibility of all hazards out there for uh, Thursday in this part of Texas, including the tornado potential, but we'll look at that uh, tomorrow. Uh, when we have a little bit better look at the uh, at the forecast models. Uh, for now, I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone has a good day. Keep an eye on 3500, though. Still looks like it may want to kick off another flare or two. That's about our only active region right there of uh, noteworthy potential. Beautiful sunspot, that's for sure. And it uh, looks like we may have some excitement coming up here in the Aurora department in the coming days. Again, we'll cover that as we get a little bit closer. Take care, folks, and uh, no doubt we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tomorrow. Take care.